better than Ezra rocked the charts in the early 90s with the hit song Good and has been pumping out music ever since. Now the band is gearing up to release a new studio album, its first since 2009. Joining me now is singer Kevin Griffin and bassist Tom Drummond. Great to have Hello. you here, guys. Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah. So last year when we spoke, Kevin, you yes. had mentioned that you were taking in all the music around you. Right. Did that end up happening and did that end up inspiring this album? I think so. I mean, our band, um, we've always been about trying to to filter the influences musically that we're, we're hearing and put them in, back into the band. Um, just so the music stays relevant and fresh. And, and fun for us. And fun, you know, um, because when you've been doing it a while, you want to stay inspired. For us, we've been doing it a while, and if we're going to do it, put out a new album, we want it to be different, you know. How have the themes changed that you guys write about, sing about, talk about, you know, families now? Mm -hmm. um, I think that... You know, the songs are, you know, still, I love exploring the, you know, the dynamic of relationships. And that never gets old. And my favorite songs are ones that kind of explore interpersonal relationships. I'm not really a, never been a political writer. I've tried to write songs that make some type of social comment. And I don't think they've been very good. <laughs> I'll leave that to Dylan or, or whoever. Um, you know, like the, the first single, Crazy Lucky, is about, um, the serendipitous nature of relationships, just how it's happenstance, how we meet people, and the, and the significant events that you know form the course of our lives are just so random. There are six and three quarter billion people in this world, and 51 percent of them are girls. You roll your eyes like I'm full of it, but. And so that's what the song is about. You know, there are six and three quarter billion people in this world, and that's kind of how we. It's it's all about googling facts and that's why we threw in Google. Because everybody does it, right? Everybody does it. So, and, I, and when the song was written, I was like, oh my God, this has to come out before someone else name drops Google. And luckily it didn't happen. <laughs> all together now yes and there's a significance to that and we went through a lot of different titles and we wanted um, a name that kind of uh, uh, referenced the fact that you know this it's about all the songs coming together the band getting together and I'm um, touring and and we kind of had all together now as an album title around for a while and finally you know everybody liked it I mean our, our manager at first was like well I think that's a it's a Beatles song title. Can we use it? And he did a little checking in it. And as we, we found out, sure. that titles are not copyrightable. But you're not much. all together now in terms of where you're living. <laughs> no, we you hate each other. You used to live in New Orleans. Yeah. Now you're in Nashville. You're still in New Orleans, yeah, right? Post Katrina. So what's that like, kind of being far apart and coming together and you know being a band again? Is that difficult or challenging? Not well, we have together? to schedule rehearsals. Yeah. Now. We schedule rehearsals, <laughs> which um, involve airplanes as opposed to just yeah, being, you know, at rehearsal space. I think it's pretty common for bands that have been around to. A, a while, you know, um, they don't always live in the same town. Um, I left uh, New Orleans uh, just to be near the songwriting community after Katrina, and I lived in LA for about six years. Um, so I need to be, because I do so much songwriting outside the band, I need to be in a, one of the centers of songwriting, which happens to be LA or Nashville. You're giving back to New Orleans and uh, with your organization. Yes. I understand you opened up a school, right? We are we are supporting a school's right. after school program oh, okay, that's for about 100 great. kids right now. It's a big responsibility, mm -hmm. you know. Bethune um, Elementary. So we want to be able to continue that um, moving forward. And we're actually looking into running a summer school program for the same reasons. It keeps kids off the street, allows the parents to work longer days. I mean, it's just good for everybody. It's a great reason to give back, especially after Katrina, like you oh, said, yeah. in oh, yeah. and everything. Can you believe it's been 20 years? Well, last year marked 20 years since you released your breakthrough album, Deluxe. It's nuts. Uh, it's, crazy. it's crazy. I mean, what was the turning point at that time, which made you kind of turn popular, turn, you know, get on the radio, right? Um, well, I think what a lot of people don't realize is we've been together for quite a while before the single came out. We put the album out ourselves in 1993. Uh, Electra picked it up in 95, so it's like we'd been together for seven years, and then seven weeks later we had a number one song at Alternative Radio. It's just like, whoa, there's the switch. And then it just kind of started from there. I mean, I, I think that, you know, when we s first saw the, the first single, Good, Start Reacting, um, that's when we knew we had something. And we'd written a lot of songs, and they didn't get that kind of reaction. Um, 
And then you're, and then the rest of your career, you're in an endless search to, to recapture that. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and you miss it because you're on the road to begin with. So when it's happening, you're like yeah. out there playing every night, and you're kind of missing. All your friends are calling you and stuff because they're seeing it on MTV or whatever. You know, hearing the song for the first time. And it was it was a great time just to see everything change and all these doors. I mean, we like Tom said, we'd been together a while. You know, we you know almost about six years touring in a van playing for $50 and a pizza, you know, living the dream, or at least pursuing it. And suddenly when uh, we were signed and after being together six years, suddenly, you know, we were the hot band at South by Southwest in, in 94, it was, uh, it was fun. When you're not in Better Than Ezra, you're writing quite a bit. You've written for yes. Sugarland, Howie Day, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. What does that bring you, that creativity, writing for other people? You know, I work with a lot of young artists and their musical influences are different than mine. So I'm always, you know, learning and staying fresh and, you know, it's it's a it's it's great for my songwriting. Do you ever get writer's block? You know, knock on wood, and I've never had it. And now I've just been cursed. Um, <laughs> you know what? You know what? To me, thanks. Some, sometimes I'm gonna get curses. <laughs> um, you know what? You know, sometimes you will find yourself. I'll find myself. You know, working on an idea for a song, and then I'll just be bashing my head trying to get something going, and I'm like, you know what? It's not happening right now, and I'll just go. I'll just go get lunch, or go exercise, or spend family time. And so I don't ever force it. You know, it has to kind of has to be inspiration. Mm -hmm. As silly as that sounds, it, re it really does. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in today. It was so thank great you. talking thank with you. Thank you so much. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see yeah, you. Yeah, it's and been a lot of time. Yeah, it's been interview. a long time. Better Than Ezra, their new single is called Crazy Lucky, and the album is called All Together Now. For this and all things entertainment, stay with CBSNews.com.